Let's continue our discussion of objects undergoing simple harmonic oscillation. So recall that simple harmonic oscillation means that our object experiences a restoring force that obeys Hooke's law. In other words, the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement that our object experiences as it oscillates along its pathway. So once again, let's suppose we take the same exact object that we spoke about in the previous lecture. So we take our mass that is attached to our coil spring. So let's suppose its equilibrium position is y equals zero. And we take our object and we pull it down, we stretch our spring a distance of a. So from y equals zero to this stretched position is given by the quantity a. So at that position, I hold my object and, I, and then I let go. The object will begin to oscillate. In other words, at this position, the spring will create a restoring force that will pull the object this way. And in this position, our spring will create a restoring force that will push our object in the opposite direction. And so, our object will oscillate back and forth between these two points. It will experience simple harmonic oscillation. Now, in the previous lecture, we saw that there exists an equation that essentially gives us the position of the object with respect to time. And that equation is given by this formula. So our position of the object with respect to time is given by the product of the amplitude and the cosine of this quantity, where A is the amplitude it's the highest point, it's the highest displacement of our oscillation. This omega is simply the angular frequency given by radians per second. This t is the time period and this phi is simply the phase angle. So this phi is simply how far to the right or to the left of the origin the cosine function begins. So let's see exactly what that means by taking this equation and graphing it on the xy plane. So the x-axis is simply the time and the y-axis is our displacement of the object. So initially the object begins at the highest point, at the maximum displacement. So initially the object begins at the amplitude. So let's say the amplitude is this point along our y-axis. So when we let go of that object, that object begins to oscillate and its position is determined by this function. So if we graph the cosine function beginning at the point A, we get the following result. Now, recall that the period of an oscillation is simply the number of seconds it takes our object to complete one full cycle. And period is given by T. So we see in the following graph, this curve represents one full cycle. So to go from this position, point A, to this position, negative A, and back to this position, A, takes one full cycle, a period of T. So that means to go from A back to A should take us T, which is exactly what is shown by the following graph. So notice that at a time at a period of t divided by 2, we reach a position of negative a. So that makes sense because it takes half a period to get to this point and then half a period to get back to this point, which is exactly what is shown by the following curve. So what exactly is this phi? What exactly is the phase angle? Well, it tells us where we should begin our cosine function. And in this case, notice our phi is simply zero because we begin our sine function at the origin. So if this sine, if this phi was something else, if this phi was, let's say, t divided by four, then that means that we would have to begin at this position. So usually this phi is given in terms of pi or in terms of radians. So let's look at this equation, let's look at our graph, and let's try to calculate 
an equation that will give us the velocity with respect to time. In other words, we want to find our velocity function with respect to time and then graph that velocity function in the same way that we graph this displacement function with respect to time. So we simply take our equation and we take the first derivative because velocity is defined as the derivative of our position function with respect to time. So if we take the derivative, so we get negative a times omega, the omega simply comes from the fact that we have to apply the chain rule and the cosine becomes sine. So we get the following result, where by the way, now we assume that our phi has a value of zero because the phase angle for this graph is zero. So, this gives us the velocity of our object as it oscillates with respect to time. Now, what about our acceleration of that object as it oscillates, as it experiences simple harmonic oscillation? Well, recall that uh, instantaneous acceleration is simply the second derivative of displacement function or the first derivative of our velocity function. So, we simply take this function and take the derivative. So notice the derivative of the sine is simply cosine and once again we apply the chain rule so we get negative a times omega squared multiplied by cosine of omega multiplied by t. Notice an important fact. The velocity and acceleration functions, just like the position function, vary sinusoidally. So that means they follow a sine or cosine curve. So let's actually take these two equations and let's graph them on our x, y axis as shown. So for the velocity function, we get the following velocity versus time curve. And for the acceleration function, we get the following acceleration versus time curve. So let's calculate the maximum velocity and the maximum acceleration of our object. In other words, in order to graph these two graphs properly, we have to find the highest possible velocity points that the object can reach and the highest possible acceleration values our object can reach when it oscillates back and forth. Well, we begin with the velocity function found in this equation, in this step. So we have velocity is equal to negative a multiplied by omega multiplied by sine of the product of omega and t. Now notice that this has a maximum value when our sine of this quantity is equal to 1. So let's suppose sine of this quantity is equal to 1, then that means v max is equal to plus or minus a multiplied by omega. Now because in the previous lecture we saw that this equation is true, omega squared equals k divided by m, where k is the spring constant and m is the mass of the object, we can use this equation to calculate our v max in terms of k and in terms of m. So we see that v max is equal to a multiplied by the square root of k divided by m. So, we simply take the square root of both sides and then we plug the result into this omega and we get the following result. So we see that the maximum point along our y-axis for this velocity versus time graph are these two points and they have and these two points are equal to this quantity. Now what about the maximum acceleration? Well once again we follow the same step. We take our equation derived in the following step and notice that once again we have uh, a is equal to negative a times omega squared multiplied by cosine of uh, this quantity. Now the highest possible value could be when cosine of this quantity is equal to zero. So let's suppose that cosine of this quantity is equal to zero and that it means we have a max is equal to plus minus a times omega squared. So once again we use this relationship derived in the previous lecture. We have omega squared is equal to the ratio of the spring constant and the mass of the object. So we simply take this quantity and plug into omega squared and we get the following result. 
that our maximum acceleration that the object can reach when it oscillates back and forth is given by the product of A and K and divide that product by M, where A is the amplitude, K is our spring constant, and M is our mass. So if we look at the following two graphs, we see that at our initial position, when we let go of that object, the velocity is zero, and it gains a maximum velocity when it reaches the equilibrium point at the following point. So this is 0.25 of t, where t is our period. Now once again, when it goes to negative a, it stops momentarily, so the velocity at this point is zero. When it goes back down to our equilibrium point, it once again reaches a maximum value. And when it completes our cycle, it once again reaches a velocity of zero. Now, what about our, our acceleration? Well, when we stretch our object, the maximum displacement, there is a force acting on the object, and the force obeys Hooke's law. And because at this position we have a maximum displacement, that means we'll have a maximum force, and therefore we'll have a maximum acceleration pointing in a negative direction at time equals zero. Now, when it reaches this position, this position is our equilibrium point, and that that means the force that the spring creates on that mass at this position is zero because the displacement is zero. And so because the force is zero, the acceleration at this point is also zero, and that's exactly what this graph tells us. Now when the mass reaches this position, once again, there's going to be a compressive force that our spring creates on this mass, and the force will be at a maximum. So at this position of t divided by 2, where t is our period, our acceleration will be maximum. Once again, when it goes back down to the equilibrium point, the acceleration drops down to zero because the force at that point is zero, and when it finally returns to its initial position, the acceleration will once again go to its maximum. So let's look at the following example. If the floor, let's say in a factory, vibrates with a frequency of 200 hertz, and the amplitude of the floor is 4 millimeters, calculate the maximum acceleration. So we know the maximum acceleration is given by this equation and also by this equation. So maximum acceleration is equal to the product of the amplitude and the square of our angular frequency. So the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. So we have a times 2 pi frequency squared. So 2 pi frequency, the frequency is simply 20 uh, seconds to the negative 1. Uh, we square this and we multiply by 4 divided by 1,000 because we want to convert from millimeters to meters. So we take the product and we get approximately 63 meters per second squared is the maximum acceleration. In other words, when the floor vibrates up and down in the factory, the maximum acceleration it reaches has a quantity equal to this value.